Hello and welcome back. In gradient descent, we have seen the memory issue when it is you know, making one step or trying to calculate the next theta, it is using the whole data set. So that's an issue. When you have huge volume, volume of trained data, you cannot actually perform or use the solver to you know, find out best thetas. So stochastic gradient descent is an algorithm which can solve the problem. In stochastic gradient descent, we will take one record at a time to calculate the next theta. That's the simple thing. Same gradient descent algorithm. Instead of taking whole data, we will take one record at a time. If you look at this code block, we can understand it clearly. So I have taken x and y into you know the input variables into x and the output variables into y. And then we have epochs, n epochs, that is five epochs we are doing are iterations. And in the gradient descent, we directly calculated the gradients using the total data set. But in here, we have taken the m iterations inside each epoch. And we are choosing that, you know, that index, the first index, right, m number of iterations. That means if there are m number of records, we will do m number of iterations in each epoch. So here I have chosen i, maybe it is 0 first. And then I will go in and say rand int of 0 it will generate one number and using that random number I am picking up picking a record from x and y that is xi and yi suppose that the random index picked is 50 or in this particular data set we have got only 25 records right so maybe it is 15 right that, that 15th record x and 15th record y we took and then calculated the gradient so using this formula we calculate we calculate theta transpose x here that is there is no transpose there because of the x structure and we calculated we multiplied these two that is a logit and then that's a prediction minus yi and multiplied with x and then calculated gradient and then we subtracted this gradient from theta by multiplying with the eta which is nothing but learning rate but here it is learning schedule we'll talk about learning schedule in a moment but you know if you look at this clearly it is using one record at a time to calculate the next gradient by taking one record at a time and doing n number of epochs right the algorithm will reach to the global minimal error place or the you know, best theta place it will find okay so with this algorithm it makes you know it is faster because you know less number of records one record only it is actually processing at a time when compared with the gradient descent. The second thing is huge training data also it can handle. Even if you have 1 billion records, we will take one record at a time and process it. So that is stochastic gradient descent and how it is solving the memory issue. So if you use stochastic gradient descent, there will not be a dummy variable trap as well as memory issue and processing issue also. So in general, in deep learning also, we will use stochastic gradient descent or mini batch gradient descent. Mini batch gradient descent is a you know little bit you know it is you know advanced version or you know kind of uh, modified version of stochastic gradient descent where you will take a batch of records instead of passing one record at a time you will take a batch of records and right? maybe eight eight records at a time to calculate one gradient maybe sixteen records at a time to calculate one by one gradient descent. Why batch gradient descent or mini, so why mini batch gradient descent? Because when you use stochastic gradient descent, the theta, the, the gradient calculated may be a little bit uh, uh, not so appropriate. Because one records x and y may be having a different kind of pattern and another records x and y may be having different kind of pattern. We are trying to understand pattern by looking at x and y both, right? So when you use one record at a time, the understanding may be a little confusing. Right? If you use whole data and try to understand the pattern, it is going to be more solid because you are trying to solve all the all equations at once. But here in stochastic gradient descent, you are trying to use one record at a time. Because of this nature, because of this particular you know behavior of the algorithm, the cost function is going to be a little jumpy or it is not going to be perfectly convex the cost function is not perfectly convex it will have you know highs and lows and you know jumping we will see that in a moment before we go there 
to reduce the dump jumpy nature the solution is that we need to use learning schedule okay so the learning schedule will actually reduce the alpha value the eta value with each iteration it will reduce a little bit to create that scenario we the formula look at this t t0 divided by t plus t1 the t is a calculated value with each with each iteration we are calculating the t value and passing it to the method and t1 is a big number see this t0 is 5 and t1 is a big number right it is a 600000 so with each you know iteration the 600000 will increase right this sorry the 600000 value will get added the t1 value will get added with t that means it's going to increase a little bit when denominator increases the return value actually reduces or the learning rate reduces with each iteration in stochastic gradient gradient descent to reduce the jumpy nature of the cost function we will use this uh, you know learning schedule formula okay so as a whole stochastic gradient descent actually works on huge data and then it works faster because it is working with only one record at a time and then a uh, huge volume of data it can work with let us jump in and try to look at the accuracy it got in number of iterations so if you look at this right we have epoch 1 to epoch 5 by epoch 5 it actually achieved 334 in our gradient descent we achieved 333 in 70 iterations or or 60 iterations in 1 1500 calculations 1500 matrix manipulation because we are using whole data to calculate next theta but here we are using one record at a time right so we are did five epochs that means in each epoch in this particular data set we have got 25 records so we are doing only 125 math manipulations in 125 math manipulations we have got 334 that means you no know, one one number more than the accuracy we have got on the batch gradient descent but the amount of processing power you used is very less 125 compared to 1500 is very less right so when you when you look at stochastic gradient descent it always will not reach to the global minimal theta but you know it actually jumps around that minimal global theta when you look at that stochastic that uh, parabolic curve of the theta and j of theta batch gradient descent definitely reaches to the global minima but the stochastic gradient descent reaches here and just jumps around it will not stay in a single place because of the one record at a time processing thing one record may give one kind of a one kind of a, a pattern and another record may give another kind of a pattern because of these little bit uh, minute pa pattern changes the theta will jump around the global minima it will it may not stay at a single point even though it is not staying at a single point stochastic gradient descent is best because in 125 math calculations we have got the almost best accuracy that means almost best theta we were able to find okay so that's about uh, the stochastic gradient descent we'll understand a little more about why this equation is gradient and uh, you know consolidating the gradient descent algorithm we'll do it in next video thank you